Denver Research Institute isn't the only place in the country building machines to run on hydrides. There's a bus that runs on hydrogen in Provo, Utah. It costs $50,000 to modify the engine, which uses 35 pounds of hydrogen to run 100 miles. An expensive operation and a lot of time spent refueling, but still, it is a bus that can operate on hydrogen, and the only thing coming out of its tailpipe is water. Fuel cells were used on the Gemini and later space missions because conventional batteries would not last long enough for the journey to the moon. To see how safe a hydride is compared to gasoline or propane, engineers from the Denver Research Institute's Center for Hydrogen Energy Technology drove out to a military firing range to set on fire equal amounts of propane, gasoline, and hydrogen. To make sure the fuel burned, a gas line was lighted near the fuel tanks. Rifle bullets were used to puncture the tanks. First, Frank Lynch fired a bullet into a propane cylinder. Such a puncture could happen in an industrial accident. Then Frank fired a bullet at a can of gasoline. The escaping liquid spilled to the ground on fire and burned for several minutes. Then, a bullet was fired into the metal hydride containing the hydrogen gas. We got it right in the label, Russ. Good. Well, that's a lot tamer than the propane and gasoline container failures. About the only thing that can be seen here is the the particles of metal hydride escaping the cylinder in the in the flow of hydrogen gas, we really do have a flame coming out of that hole. But there's no spillage of, of the entire contents of the container, even though both the propane, gasoline, and, uh, and the metal hydride cylinder, too, has uh, the same content of fuel energy. The hydride can only lose its fuel at a very slow rate that that is controlled by the leaking of heat into this cylinder. The cylinder is, is very cold at this time, and it's drawing heat from the ambient air, releasing the hydrogen from its position locked up inside the metal crystals, and letting it slowly come out the hole. But there is no way that all of it can come out immediately, as in the case of the propane or gasoline containers. What we have are some iron titanium particles here under the microscope. Each particle is about the size of a grain of sand. And I think what this shows very nicely under the microscope is that iron titanium and all the hydrides are really very similar to, to water sponges for, for water. They're really solid sponges for hydrogen. Let's see that a little bit better by increasing the magnification and looking at an individual particle of the iron titanium. You can see it looks very much like a sponge in cross-section. It's full of cracks and, and porosity. And just like a water sponge soaks up water, these hydrides, these iron titanium in this example, soaks up hydrogen through these cracks. The hydrogen enters through these cracks, goes down to finer and finer cracks, and finally ends up actually located between the atoms, right in the atom atomic structure of the, of the metal itself. So what we have here in summary is a solid metal sponge for hydrogen gas, a very safe and compact way of storing hydrogen in a solid form.